that's a John Deere processor. 2054 with the Warta 622B head. This machine is going through this wood really fast. It's a fairly new looking machine. All done and ready to go to the next deck of dead pine. can't see because it's not open has some guides rollers in there and the saws front saw and a back saw all calibrated inside the machine by a computer to give you the cuts that you need you program it to what you calibrate it to what you want now just to show you the camera should be picking it up. You'll see all little spots on the, sh on the pieces of wood where the rollers went up measuring the meters or the feet for the log. These here are supposed to be in 16s. But you can see the little marks on it when it rolls along that and then it knows the length according to the computer and then you press a button for the saw to come out and saw it. When it's operating it's a really cool sound and the limbs are coming off. These are very dry all from dead pine they may get some lumber out of them in 2x4s, 2x3s, and the rest will be chipped. Over here is different because they got a couple of spruce logs, which are in very good shape, as you can see by the butt ends. Now that tree is very old. I mean, it's not the oldest tree I've seen. But it's old. And everybody knows by now that you count the age of a tree by the rings. So you see they're evident here. The growth was, as I understand, quicker. As the tree got bigger, the gap. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12 years of growth right to there. Then they get really fine. You'd almost have to have a needle. So if that's 12, you can just well imagine all these small ones down here from the core out. You're talking over 50 years, maybe even 70 or 80, but you'd really have to go through and count that you can see the difference. They say that the pine grows faster, that's why they replant it. It's quicker to harvest over time. So you can see how dense the growth is on that. And you can see what happens when the beetles get to it. They turn the bark and it starts to die from the inside, outside in there. You can see where it's darker. And it just drains the sap, starts, stops going to the tree and it just dies. If it's not cut, it gets blacker and blacker and just falls over from the roots. There's nothing to keep it alive anymore. The photosynthesis stopped and it's, it's over with. It's kind of sad in a way because I don't really appreciate uh, the forest as much as we should when you think about it. What a tree goes through to grow, they're very resilient. They try to grow up through anything. 
And then you have these, Mother Nature takes care of itself. It's meant to be that the beetle came along and got rid of these. Things happen for a reason. I'd much rather see, try to salvage a dead forest than cutting down the green forest. You can see the patterns of the worms and the bugs. Perhaps even the beetle that went through on this bark. You can see all the patterns. I'm going to try to find a picture of the beetle. So even myself can really see what it looks like. I'm more th thinking of it being the black, but I'm probably wrong. And as you can see, the traveling Shih Tzu is with me. And of course she loves walking logs. Not that she should. But you're bound to see her doing these acrobatics. Hey girl! Smile for everybody. A mountain climber. You want to say hello to everybody traveling Shih Tzu? You just want to get full of dust. So we're going to head back over here and see what else is going on. Just walking this gravel road back. It's getting cooler faster. It gets it's getting dark earlier too. And the woodpeckers and partridge really like this gravel road, sandy road. There's a lot more population here of birds and birds of prey because they use this to help digest their food. We're calling for some rain soon, which is good because this gets very dusty. I'm coming up here on some dead pine. So you can actually see again how devastating it is to the tree. Now this isn't to say that our whole province doesn't have beautiful trees. It does. Cedar, Douglas fir, lots of big, big forests. And in the northern part, this happened a lot when it beetle went through this path. Again, there is so much remoteness and wilderness and forest. This won't do it justice. And you can already see the new growth coming. Beautiful trees going up, and you can see over there the sun, the last bit of it, it's setting. Here you have a natural bog. There are some bulrushes growing and different vegetation. You're not allowed to be driving through this, tearing it up. You have to preserve it for wildlife. There are a lot of rules about allowing wildlife zones, bird perches, so much space from roads, different things. And this is just one of them. Not disturbing these water vegetation places for moose, elk, and other animals that forage here. closer to the where the machine is cutting so you can hear it behind me up on the far hill but you can see there was dead pine in here just in a narrow strip so they only took that they left all of the green trees and all of the good healthy trees down below and all this new vegetation along the roadway has been left too That's why I prefer 
cutting this kind of block of wood. So you can see here all the Douglas fir trees and some of the birch have been left as a canopy for the new growth in the forest. That's another positive result. I don't know, it's just very hard with a camera to pick up the grade on these slopes here. And it goes up and down and up and down into gullies. We have a marker here for a culvert. But you can hear the machine coming down the hill. It kind of gives you an idea of the slope, but it really doesn't do it justice. Cameras do not always show that perception that I'm having right now. <laughs>